And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. You are listening to the Patriot Pastors Podcast, where we talk about today's issues from a pastor's perspective, as well as calling America back to the faith of our fathers. Without God, democracy will not and cannot long endure. If we ever forget that we're one nation under God, then we will be a nation gone under. Here's your host, Wade Lentz and Harold Smith. Hello and welcome to the Patriot Pastors Podcast. My name is Harold Smith and I'm joined by my longtime friend, co-host Wade Lentz. And I'm hoping that since you're the singing voice between the two of us, you'll sing a little happy anniversary for us or happy birthday or something. Man, can you believe it's been a year? Since we started this podcast, we, we actually, our first podcast drops on September the 11th of last year. And I really didn't plan on it, uh, falling on September, September the 11th, but that's the day that it first dropped. And, um, this has been a learning curve for both of us. Oh, yeah. Me or you are not tech guys at all. No. And so I, we've had a lot of frustrating days for sure, getting these things downloaded and so forth. And, We've learned a lot on that aspect of it, but man, it's, it's been a joy to, to talk about several things that we've, uh, been able to on this platform. And it's give, given us, uh, really a, a listening audience that, you know, what, what we do here on the Patriot Pastors podcast is pretty unique in the aspect that we talk about things, current issues from a small town, small church pastor's perspective where a lot of uh, the pastors that you hear are from the mega churches and really cannot relate to the small town pastor. So this uh, is is different and it's been a blessing. And we have done 31 episodes uh, in mm-hmm. this year. I, I'm upset. I, I wanted to get a, a birthday cake with one candle, but you said it wasn't in the budget. <laughs> Money is tight. Money in- is tight. Inflation is rising, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but it is good to be in the same room with you. I mean, I'm in, I am in the historic Bible thumping barrel Baptist <laughs> church with Wade. We're not Zoom calling back and forth. We're actually sitting across the table from each other. It's different doing the Zoom call than in person. I'd rather do this all the time. Well, why don't we do the Zoom call? I'm in my underwear. So I, <laughs> I, now I have to get dressed and everything. I normally just put a shirt on and, but no, I do. I would rather sit down at the table with you. I'd rather have a, uh, well, I'd rather have the fellowship that we have anyways when we get together. But yeah, I can't believe 31 episodes where you and I sat down and we either talked about issues that were pertinent to the church at the time, uh, politics. Uh, we talked about SBC a lot because of what was going on and what is going on in the convention. I would imagine as we approach it in the next um, election, we'll probably shift more back into politics than we have. But I mean... Mm-hmm. What's done is done. We've got Joe Biden. He's our president. We've got Asa Hutchison for our governor here in Arkansas. And there's really not much we can do until it's time to vote again. Exactly. So, yeah, that those first episodes that we we dropped were more in lines with government and politics. And we talked about things such as religious liberty. Uh, We mentioned the John MacArthur issues that were going on last year at this time where they were the state was suing them, really punishing them for meeting in person. But have you heard about yes. what? Tell us about. I heard that the state settled with them out of court for eight hundred thousand dollars. Yes, and so the state agreed to pay Grace Community Church eight hundred thousand dollars and gave them their parking spots back. Yes, and if you've ever been to Grace Community Church, having parking spots is a big deal in in Greater LA, and so. I, I thought that was as good a news as we could possibly hear. And I think it sets a precedence for other churches 
that they're not going to be bullied by local governments. Right. That the freedom of religion and to, to, to exercise religion is still available today. Yes. But, you know, thank the Lord for John MacArthur. He, he could have folded. He could have given in to what the state was asking them to do, but he held his ground and the Lord blessed that. Right. And uh, so I was so pleased to hear about that. Some of the highlights that we had over the past year was that we were able in January to interview Mike Stone. When I set the interview up back in November of 2020, I had no idea then that he was going to be running for Southern Baptist Convention president. When we interviewed him in January, we were the first podcast interview of him announcing that he was going to be a candidate for the SBC. And that was really our most listened to podcast with yeah. Mike Stone. And you know, one of the things that's come out of that is you and I really got to know Mike on a more personal basis. I mean, he knew of us, we knew of him, but we didn't really know each other. And since we've interviewed him a few times on the podcast, we've messaged back and forth, we've called back and forth. He actually came and when he was uh, traveling around the country, kind of getting his message for what his vision for president would look like. He came to Arkansas and we got to spend some time with him. That really just told me that Mike Stone was indeed the guy that we thought he was. He's a genuine mm-hmm. heart for the Lord, local church pastor. And to see the SBC overlook such a worthy candidate, such a, a gifted candidate as him yes, for who they have and all the scandals that came out of that really tells you where the convention is. And that's probably, I think that was our second most popular podcast was when we talked about that ship had sailed mm-hmm. after the convention, how to how to cope with things right. in the world that the Southern Baptist Convention is now. Yes, that was a very, very popular uh, podcast for us. But, you know, what's amazing is you, we hate to say <laughs> something like this, but we were right on a couple of issues that are really have been vindicated now and right. clearly seen, such as, hey, we warned the people back last year. Biden is nothing more than a Trojan horse. And so many of these evangelicals were, you know, were anti-Trump and, and that uh, Christians were okay if they voted for Biden. Uh, now, many of them are now saying, oh boy, yeah. what have we done? Yeah. But also the Mike Stone issue, we look back at, hey, we got behind him. He, the SBC would have been doing great with him. And now that they have elected Ed Linton, who was a moderate, or more liberal candidate who is now plagued with this plagiarism scandal right. that nothing is being done at all and uh, where it's looking, again, that the SBC has made a huge mistake. Well, I don't think they've made a huge mistake. I think they've revealed who they really are. Yeah. Th- this yes. is the Southern Baptist Convention in the 21st century. Very true. I-, I really think that's something that we need not misunderstand the majority of the people on the convention floor on the day of the convention voted for him. So that's who the convention is. That is a reflection of their democratic process. Looking forward, which, you know, we're almost a year away, but I don't really see anything changing for the better or the more conservative path in Anaheim, California, of all places. Right. I don't don't see mom and pop pastors leaving their small churches in Kentucky and Tennessee and Arkansas and Virginia somehow getting all the way to Anaheim, California no, no. to cast a vote. I just don't see it happening. No, he, he will definitely be reelected in, uh, next year for sure in, in California. You know, like you said, Mike Stone has, has really become a friend to you and I. And, right. and that's just indicative of his character, yeah. how he uh, really has taken up with what many would call just small town pastors, yeah. you know, and treat us like, uh, like he's known us all, all his life. Let me tell you something else about some highlights that we've uh, seen over the past year. Our Facebook page has grown to over 500 followers in one year on all of our platforms. That is our Podbean, podcast apps, YouTube, uh, Facebook, all, all of those platforms that we release the episodes. We have had over 13,000 downloads and views and those downloads have reached over 20 countries, 20 different countries 
in 47 of the 50 states. That amazes me because my English ain't even that good. And I can't imagine somebody <laughs> with another language trying to decipher what I'm saying. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what I, what I saw that, uh, our, our latest podcast before this one, which was, uh, politics and the pulpit, it was downloaded in these countries that are in lockdown by their governments, such as Australia and France and Spain. Right. And so there's, there are, pastors who are looking for this type of podcast and uh so prayerfully they receive some help from that but which which state is the most downloaded i would guess california no mm. it's close though texas is the number texas. one texas yeah so not arkansas both well, of us are arkansas that's because pastors. everybody's fleeing california and they're in texas now <laughs> that's true that seems that's to true. be the growing trend <laughs> but texas california florida even New Jersey, our top listener. Wow. So uh, pretty cool. Yeah. And that's the wonderful thing about the Internet is it does give a voice to just two country preachers sitting yes. down talking issues. Right. We're not experts. You know, we've never claimed to be experts, but we do have an open Bible. We do pray on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. We do have the, you know, seek to have the mind of Christ and look at things from a, a biblical perspective. And I think it's encouraging that. Two guys with an open Bible and some logic and some common sense can see the world rightly. We don't have to have a, a doctor's degree in deep theology to be able to make the proper decisions about the, what's going on in the world around us. Right. And we catch a lot of flack because this is the Patriot Pastors podcast. People don't have a problem with us being pastors. They have a problem with us being patriots. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you can't have God and country while we always put God first. There's nothing wrong with being uh, patriotic and loving your country, treasuring the freedoms that we have. Right. I would rather maintain these liberties and freedoms through education, through discussion, than I would try to maintain them through, you know, where we're headed if we continue to, to see them erode. History says you're headed to some kind of a war, a revolution, an uprising, turmoil. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get there. I, I wanna, right. uh, We pray for peace. We pray for those that rule over us that we may live in peace. Mm -hmm. But part of that is to just be preachers and also say, look, we're citizens. Yes. You know, Paul was an apostle. He was also a Roman citizen. And he appealed to government at times when he needed to. We should be doing the same thing. Yeah, that's that's exactly what this podcast, uh, why it was created. And we, we pray that uh, that has been a blessing and a help to many people. Let's let's change subjects real quick. You know, a lot has changed in a year. A lot can change in a year. We've seen that in the political realm even in the uh, the church-related rela realm. But it also changes for our ministries. You have been a longtime pastor at Lee Creek Baptist Church, but change is coming. Tell us about that. Change has came. My last Sunday as the pastor of Lee Creek was this past Sunday. I preached through the end of August as the pastor there. I'm still a member there. Plan to stay a member there. I never planned on leaving Lee Creek. You know, once you pass that eight, ten-year threshold and they still love you— <laughs> And they, they, they haven't thrown you out yet. Uh, you just kind of get the idea. I'll be here the rest of my life. Right. And uh, that's what I had, you know, modeled my ministry. I'm going to be a Lee Creek the rest of my life. But in my case, I have a whole nother ministry that kind of operates on the sidelines where I minister to pastors and, and churches. And our church operates a couple of conferences where we, we've tried to minister to preachers. And, and um, those ministries just kept growing to the point that, I was just exhausted and it wasn't from pastoring Lee Creek. It was from pastoring Lee Creek and helping churches find pastors, helping pastors find churches, giving preachers instruction that were on the verge of being fired or battling deacons and all. Anytime you, anytime you get involved in counseling and you, you hear somebody else's drama, it, it puts you in it and you're tired from it. Mm -hmm. So it got to the point where I, I had to make a decision. I couldn't continue to minister to preachers and churches and give Lee Creek the time and attention that I felt they were, you know, they needed from the pastor. Right. So I've made the decision to um, go into what I'm calling church revitalization, not where we go in and change the name and put gel in our hair and change the light bulbs and, you know, yeah. change the music, but where we try to go to struggling churches or churches that maybe can't find a pastor and help them find a biblically grounded doctrinal preacher not not a young guy with a new plan, but really an old guy with an old gospel. And uh, there's nobody doing that in our area, Western Arkansas, Eastern Oklahoma. 
So that's my plan as I want to go and help churches that are struggling to find the right leadership. And since I have such a, um, a network of preachers, mm -hmm. help those preachers find a church, help those churches find a preacher. And um, so that's what I'm going to be spending my time doing in the future. So I, I won't be able to say I'm the pastor at Lee Creek. I'll just be a member there. I'll be held accountable by them. They'll be the ones that if I get out of line, they'll be the ones that call me down and, right. and discipline me. And I can think of no group I'd rather have do that than them. You know, you uh, really, that ministry that you're talking about, there is a great need for that. And our church in particular specifically was really in a position where we could have utilized someone with that ministry, such as what you're getting into, because our church was, uh, let's go back 10 years ago, we were 120 years faithful givers to the Southern Baptist Convention, uh, very much involved in the association here in Faulkner County, Arkansas. But the church at the time had been two years without a pastor. They had gone through a lot. Church was not in great shape. And what does the SBC do? Do they come along the side barrel and help them through this difficult time? No. Here's what the SBC does. They put all their money into planting another church two miles down the road from Barrel. And that did not set well at all with Barrel. Here, Barrel, again, has given hundreds of thousands of dollars down through the years to the SBC and in their time of need, the SBC bypasses them and plants another church that did not last four years. Yeah, and, and that's really what motivates me to go to the existing churches is because the, the Southern Baptist model is we're just going to plant churches. We're just going to keep planting churches. But they're planting cowboy churches, biker churches, um, just churches that don't really look like any of the churches I grew up in. Right. It, it's It's not so... What we were seeing happening was older churches, smaller churches, struggling churches, they were being told by their local association, just give us the keys to your building and your bank account and we'll, we'll liquidate everything and use it on missions or we'll send a new congregation out to, to take over your old building. Basically just close and get out of the way and let us do missions. Mm -hmm. And you know, the authority in the autonomy is in the local church. Right. So what got me on this trajectory is I heard word of a director of missions telling, I said, you tell that church to call me. So they called me and I've helped them find a young pastor. And it's been a couple of years. It's worked out. And um, that church is thriving again. And they didn't need to sell their building and, and they just needed the right kind of leadership. Mm -hmm. So rather than planning just multitudes of new churches hoping they make it, Let's go to an existing building, an existing body, and an existing location and see if we can turn things around. Right. And if we can't, hey, then, you know, not every church is guaranteed to stay. But I, I think there needs to be somebody that's approaching it from, let's find you a biblical pastor, mm -hmm. not a young kid with a new idea. Let's find you an, an older man <laughs> with, a, with a tried and true technique of right. preaching God's word verse by verse. Because it's preaching that builds churches. Yes. It's preaching yeah. that sustains churches, and it's preaching that'll turn them around. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's so true. There was a church that I used to be a pastor of nearby in a nearby town. A couple of years ago, they got a young pastor in there. And here, this is a, a country church in a little town with maybe 30 people. And they call this young man, and the young man comes in there and just totally revamps everything takes out the hymn books, puts up a screen, changes the style of the music to more contemporary, does all these sorts of changes thinking that, oh, this is really what's going to grow the church. It did not grow. The church split even more. There was more turmoil, and uh, he didn't last a year. And and so that's what you have a lot. Like you're saying, you, you get these young novices in there that, have no experience. And that's who's being recommended to the oh, churches sure. from, from Little Rock. Right, right. That's what they're being told they need is that young man with a new idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the scripture that you shared with me earlier was out of Revelation. Uh, was it the church of Sardis? Church of Sardis. What was that scripture you were? It was strengthen, you know, strengthen the things which remain. Yes. And that's kind of been the verse that's stuck in my head. That church was dead. There were a few people alive, but mm -hmm. the church itself was dead. And the Lord said, look, you know, turn away from that and start fixing what's left. And I really think if you look at the ministry I'm going to embark in, that's basically what I'm seeking to do. 
I'm seeking to find a dead church. Yeah. If your church is running a hundred people and you know, y'all got four or five people on staff, I'm not the guy to help you. Mm -hmm. If your church is running 15 and you're about to close the doors, that's how desperate you have to be to contact Harold Smith. Yeah. Basically. Right. You know, right. Hey, we've tried everything <laughs> else. Would you help? And, and I'd be glad to go to that size church because strength is not in our size. Mm -hmm. It's in our adherence to the word of God, our love for God. And so the problem I was running into is if you're pastoring a church, you're there every Sunday. You're there every Wednesday. You're there during the week counseling and ministering. I need to go to these little churches and see firsthand. What's going on? I'm sending young preachers out to churches that I've never been into. Right. I could be sending them to the very pits of hell and I wouldn't know it. Sure, sure. And when you send a young preacher out to to do this and you say, hey, what did you think? You know, how's the church? What, what, what is it? They don't know. That takes a man with 15 years of pastoral experience that has t seen a church turn around. And so I just became convinced that all the years I've spent at Lee Creek, Lee Creek was 13 years old when I came there. The church was 13 years old. I was pastor number six. So this was a, a cyclic church that just ate up preachers and spit them out. Yeah. Uh, having been there the last 14 years, I know how church fire structures work. Mm -hmm. I, I know what to expect. I've been down that road. The Lord graciously brought me through it. But if we're going to see these churches turn around, we can't send them a young, inexperienced guy without him having a mentor to tell him, Here's where you're headed. Here's what's going to happen next. Yes. And I've helped so many preachers along the way do that. So I think it's important that somebody embarks in this. And I don't really have a, a, a model for how to do it, Wade. I mm -hmm. mean, I have a lot of church support. Other churches have said, look, we believe in this. We believe what you're doing. You're the right guy for it. So they're contributing to my my overall income. I'm receiving yeah. support from a multitude of different churches to do this. But what I hope to do is kind of model it so that I'm doing it in Western Arkansas. Maybe somebody will do it in Eastern Arkansas. Maybe somebody will do it in Southern Missouri. And maybe they'll call me and say, hey, what worked, what didn't? Because I don't really have a model. I can't really say, well, I'm, I'm following in the shoes of Brother Joe Joe or Joe Brown or Joe Beal or whatever. I don't know anybody else that's done this. Right. And usually what I see doing it are really, really old preachers that are retired and they're just wanting to supplement their retirement, you know, and fill a pulpit somewhere. Yeah. I'm young enough, you know, I don't want to just go fill in. I want to see things fixed. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, we, we need strong churches. And what we're seeing in America, our nation is so desperately sick. That's because our churches are desperately sick. Yeah. We need strong churches. And, yeah. and that is a tremendous ministry. We'll be praying for you, man. I know I you're, this it. is a step of faith for you to step down from a long-term pastorate to doing something new and that's that's never easy no it but you know you, you get the lord puts you in a in a position where you don't have any choice but to do it you know i could arrive here on my own two feet or i could be spit out by great fish mm -hmm. i'm thoroughly convinced this is what i'm supposed to do and i'm yes. thoroughly convinced the lord take care of it that's great well we're gonna wrap it up here on on this episode i do want to say that if you have anything that you would like for us to talk about we had an individual to ask us the other day if we would talk about uh, women pastors that's becoming a really big issue especially in the southern baptist convention and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about that in the very near future and if you have any subjects or any topics that that we as small town pastors can can speak on please let us know we love to hear from you thank you for listening to this podcast it has been a great year and looking forward to what the lord has for us in the coming year uh, but thanks again for listening to this episode. Until next time.